Hello, in the seventh round of Reykjavik Open Tournament, I played with a Chinese player, Tan Zhongyi, uh, multiple world champion in youth categories. Mm. Well, she started the game with d4. I again decided to play King's Indian. Somehow in this tournament, I don't know why, but I keep choosing this opening. G3, castle. Bishop G2, and for some reason, <laughs> they also choose the same line against me. Castle, knight bd7, knight c3, e5, h3. I like this move for white, because, okay, it's maybe not necessary to, to close the bishop immediately with e4. So I think this move is uh, probably quite logical. And uh, now I played rook e8, white pushes e4, because now I might want to push e4 myself, and who knows, maybe even e3 and even some exchange sacrifice, so she played e4. And uh, like in my earlier games, I took on d4 after knight takes, I played knight c5, rook e1, and a5. She repeated knight db5, like in my game with Peter Schreiner from two days ago. And I played the same move, bishop d7. And to my surprise, she also repeated queen c2 after thanking for Okay, she had already spent around 20 minutes, more than 20 minutes, so possibility of uh, her having uh, prepared something for this game was really low, I thought. And I decided to quickly repeat my move from that game, bishop e6, because who knows, maybe she can face the same problem, problems and maybe she will even choose to play same moves, knight a3 and so on. Uh, when I can have a really nice position. Well, I was not sure after knight a3 how to react, if to play knight fd7 or to play c6, because I analyzed my game a bit. But uh, she played uh, actually much stronger. She played bishop e3, which is a very good move. I could remember from my brief analysis that I should take the pawn on c4. And after sorry, after bishop c5, d takes c5, I was still hoping that maybe she would go wrong with e5 move. I analyzed this first uh, with, after my game with uh, my opponent two days ago, and uh, then we concluded that after knight d7, bishop takes b7, knight e5, black has a really excellent play, and I even checked a bit with computers, only to be sure that this variation is not good for white, because I can take on e1 and at the same time attack the queen on c2. So okay, I was hoping for some sweet win like this, but it didn't happen. She played a very nice move, rook d one She centralized her rook and now I have to choose my move, and I was remembering that in, in my analysis computer was showing queen c8. Well, I was not very sure, but I, I was remembering some line like queen c8 and e5. No, not e5. I, I was remembering f4, and then like I would go bishop e6, and then position would be unclear. I, I thought I, I was remembering something like this, but I'm not really sure. So I spent some time here well, thinking about queen moves queen e7, queen c8 and queen b8. Okay, finally I, I decided to make this move because I was remembering it was best and it was making sense. The only problem is that now it's uh, really difficult to push c6 because of knight d6. And I was expecting her to play f4 because this is what I was remembering. And then I'm really not sure what, what I would have done, but in the game she pushed e5. 
course I didn't take rook e5. Uh, I was thinking if to play knight d7 or knight h5, but already somehow I didn't like my position so much. Mm, so I mean I can play knight d7 and then I can try to bring this knight to f8 and e6 to protect my weaknesses on c7 and c5 and uh, well at the moment this knight is also attacking the pawn so I thought should probably go f4 and then I thought I would probably go knight f8 to bring this knight to e6 okay from there it can also jump to d4 maybe I can first take on b5 then jump to d4 then exchange many pieces and maybe equalize the position but still it looked unpleasant, this position looked unpleasant and I thought I wouldn't have enough time. I mean, I'm just one pawn up, but white's pieces are really placed uh, so great. And I was I was having problems actually to understand why the computer was saying that the position was around equal when in fact it looked like uh, not very pleasant position to me. Okay, finally I decided to go to h5 and create a, a bit more tactical play. Now I, I want to take on e5 and white cannot protect with f4. This is the, the main idea of move knight h5 it, it, because now pawn g3 is under attack and white can of course not push g4 then my knight will have fantastic square. So I was thinking about white's moves and well, I saw several moves, but uh, most of all I was concerned about Queen a4, I think. She's now taking uh, also f4 square under control, so g4 can be a, a peace winning threat. And now I thought I would have to take. And she can take with the Queen attacking b7, so I absolutely have to play c6. Then she also takes this pawn on c5. Now material is same and it looks like her pieces are more active although i must also say that these pawn, pawns on b7 and c6 are very very important for me they are limiting both her bishop and her knight so i was i was never too worried if i can have such pawn structure i was never really too much worried about my position and here i also saw a move queen b8 attacking the pawn on e5 and now it might be difficult for her to protect this pawn because uh, rook d6 can be met by bishop f8. Still even about this position I was not sure because some f6 weakness and so on but uh, well here probably she can also push e6 and so on but I decided to think about such things later. I, I probably even spent, spent even too much time until here so i finally played knight h5 how much time i had left at this moment i had one hour left so okay maybe maybe the pace was fine and uh, she didn't play queen a4 she played another normal move b3 and now i have two options i can either return to e6 or take on b5 Well, if I return to e6, I was not really happy about my position. I, I thought she would be able to jump to d5 maybe. Then I, I probably have to take. And I thought she would take with the rook. Now she wants to take the pawn on c5 also with the rook. And I have to protect this pawn. And somehow I, I think I saw here also that uh, if I go c6 at some point, she can just jump to d6 with her knight and then take on d6 with the rook, and my pawn on c5 is gone. So maybe she can just double her rooks here and try to go rook d7. So now I, I, I should go something like c6, she can jump to d6 and when I take, she takes with a rook. 
Well, I can take the pawn on e5. Somehow it looked uh, a bit scary, but maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe my position is okay. My knight is really out of play, but also my pawns on b7 and c6 are limiting her bishop. So I'm not sure if she can, if she has something here. Maybe she, she simply cannot play like this. Okay, in any case, knight d5 is just one option here. I, I also thought she would have many moves to choose from. And somehow I thought it was, it was time to eliminate some pieces and I took on b5. And after knight b5, again, I had two options. One option was to play bishop f8 and try to bring my knight to g7 and e6. Well, I thought probably white should have some things to create some problems for me, but I didn't see them. So I thought this was a playable option. Other option that I considered was to take on e5 with my rook. And after the exchange, she should take the pawn on c5. Now she's only one pawn down and I thought I would lose that pawn. So here I, I, I considered only queen f5, I think. I looked at the position, but I failed to find other meaningful moves. And then I thought she would take on b7. And I would go rook b8. Now, okay, g4 is never possible for her, generally because of bishop h2. This thing I saw. But uh, somehow I, I was not happy. My my knight on h5 is really badly placed for the moment. And all her pieces are probably better placed than my pieces. And plus my pawn structure is weaker. So I decided to avoid this position. It's possible to save maybe, but I thought it was better to... Okay, exchange and then bishop f8 to hang on to my extra pawn and also make her think about uh, how to restore material balance or, or or at least create some more serious threats so of course white here has compensation she can even play queen, king h2 and f4 and try to push king side pawns at some point but she she spent really much time here for the next two moves maybe 20 minutes and she didn't uh, find some good idea so okay this position is critical and i'm not sure what white should do but i feel there are good things for white here well maybe black can hold but there must be something better than what she played and uh, tan zhongi chose queen d2 here i played knight g7 which is very logical knight's doing nothing there so i'm coming back to g7 and um, well, even better that she has nothing dangerous, I thought. Well, I saw queen d7 move and it, it looked uh, really bad because anyway, I, my dream was to exchange queens and then play with extra pawn this endgame, try to create some good pawns on the queen side. And when I played knight g7, I saw if, if she goes queen d7, I have c6 move. And if she jumps now knight c7, which might be the only problem, I can now play, for example, rook d8. After the game, she pointed out that uh, rook e7 was also possible. Both of these moves should be enough to win the game. So, sh she did play this and probably she missed something. I, after I checked and played c6, I, and I was really happy around here. And, uh, well, I was feeling pretty confident and I thought I, I would probably win the game now. And I was thinking should either exchange queens or jump with knight to c3, so to be able to come to f6 maybe later. But she she played a good move here, knight a3. And now here I had a half an hour, 28 minutes on my clock, and I failed to find something great. Now my problems were such. Okay, now situation is much simpler. I have uh, one pawn more and excellent winning chances and uh, I don't have any huge problems in my position. My biggest problem is knight coming to c4. This knight is going to be really strong and 
it wants to come to b6, it's attacking my pawn on a5, it, it protects e5, it might come to d6, so this knight is a monster. And at the same time, I can never chase it away with b5, because then my pawn on c6 uh, will be terribly weak. Like this, her bishop is not working, So, but whatever I do, she will have one monster piece. And together with these two rooks that are well placed, the situation becomes not so easy. So after c6, I, I thought I would only have technical problems. But after she played knight a3, I realized that still the game is not over and that I have to, to do some good things if I want to win. So generally I was considering two ideas. One was to take, to exchange the queens on d7 and other was to push a4. If I exchange the queens, her rook comes attacking my b7 pawn. I thought I would have to go rook e7 and now the biggest problem for me was just the rook ed1 doubling the rooks. If I take on e5, I lose this pawn and it's clear that only white can be better here. And if I don't do it, well, white already wants to take on e7, then come with other rook. So I didn't like this option. So I decided to push a4 and get rid of some weakness at least and open my rook. And I expected totally knight c4, which she did. Then I took on b6, I have time for this and she recaptured. And here again, okay, I, I had only 20 minutes left by now. Here again, I started to think what to do. I can, I thought I, I can either take on d7 or play rook e7. At first, I was pretty sure I would exchange the queen somehow when she came to d7. I was very happy about exchanging queens, but now her pieces have some good positions and I didn't know how to do something anymore. So I, I looked at uh, exchanging and then playing rook e7 and she can now either take or double the rooks let's say she takes and then plays rook d1 now i cannot play for example rook d8 because she will exchange this two and then ju just jump to d6 and i will lose one pawn and position will be probably equal so rook wants to come to to d7 I can try to play knight f5 I want to go to d4 now she'll play rook d7 and now I might push b5 because to protect this pawn it's not possible I thought rook b8 this knight can come to a5 it's really a monster knight attacking b7 and c6 now both of her pieces are great and I, I thought I wouldn't have chances to win this game and if I push b5 well now her bishop is very strong and again I thought I would lose some queenside pawns so I was not somehow very happy about this okay it was possible but and also here she, she can simply double the rooks and this might be even better I was not sure, but it's possible. So finally I decided to play rook e7. And my idea was, okay, now she can either exchange queens or, or go back. If she goes back, I will just play queen c7. And now her knight cannot come to b6. It can come to d6, but it's not so dangerous. My c7, c6 pawn is covered, so I can sometimes push b5. And I want my main idea is to come knight e6, knight d4, and so on. So I was, okay, I, I prefer to exchange queens, but when I see I couldn't achieve anything by that, I decided maybe this was better. And if she exchanges, then I take with my rook. And I thought now one of my rooks would come to c7. And from there it, it would protect my b6, b7, c6 pawns. Then everything will be safe for a while. And uh, I have seven ranks, so rook cannot come there. And now I can start uh, to improve my knight. Knight can go to d4. 
attack at the pawn on b3 and I thought I would have uh, nice winning chances here. I was, I was hoping that she would actually exchange the queens, but she didn't. She, after I played rook e7, she moved her queen back to d3 and I played quickly queen c7. I, I, okay, this is normal move. So now we have a new position and well white cannot really make some huge threats so easily and I, I think I was expecting f4 here but she pushed h4 which is okay interesting move she wants sometimes to weaken my king sometimes maybe get h3 square for her bishop and uh, I had 10 minutes here so already not too much time to think and I saw a possibility, well, I wanted very much to push b5, but right now I cannot do it because knight will come to d6, which is a good square for the knight, and then my pawns on the queen side are weak. So I decided, I was thinking about coming back with my rook to e8, maybe, but I decided to jump to f5, and my idea was now to play b5 on the next move. For example, if white goes bishop h3, which I thought would, would be me some justification maybe of h4 move, then I can jump, I can push b5 and now she cannot take on f5 because I can insert bc4, I was happy about this. So she must uh, play with this knight, probably she has to try knight d6 and now I can just take on d6. Now if she takes with a pawn I will play rook e1 then d6 will fall. And if she takes with the queen, I thought I would exchange queens and when she takes with the rook, I can play rook takes e5. And I thought this position would probably be with very good winning chances to extra pawns. So after knight f5 she played h5, which was a better move. and. Now I spent almost all my time and when I was down to 4 minutes I decided to push b5 and I calculated that I would have extra pawn in endgame with opposite color bishops and rooks but it was wrong calculation. My other idea was to play rook back to e8 and control d6 square one more time. Now maybe I want to go rook a to d8 and okay I have better position but still it's it's playable for her as well. But I, I pushed uh, b5, which was wrong. She used uh, her chance to insert hg6. I didn't even consider b takes c4. It looks it looked crazy. But she mentioned after the game that maybe it can be possible to do something like this, but I don't believe. So I, I just recaptured and she played knight d6 of course and now I, I took, I, I had very little time, just a few minutes here, a couple of minutes maybe and I just followed my calculations, well if she takes with the pawn I saw that I would be able to take on e1 and then take with bishop on d6, two extra pawns, okay I will probably lose one of them but then I will keep the other one and this can be really enough for serious winning chances. But she took with the queen and now I was calculating on queen takes d6, rook takes d6 and rook takes e5. Well I, I obviously have nothing else and I thought that she would have to take on e5 and after bishop d6 again it's two extra pawns. But I forgot uh, about rook g6 possibility unfortunately. Okay, I saw it of course a few moves ago, but not not in time. I saw it after she maybe maybe here or, or just after I played, but it was too late already because already here there's nothing I can do. I just had to follow my calculation. I didn't have time and probably anyway there is nothing anymore. So I took on e5, she took on 
g6, I considered a bit king h7, but it achieves nothing, so I took and she took on e5. Now I'm only one pawn up, but I'm going to lose even that one pawn. I cannot do anything. I checked on a1 to make her king go to h2. And then I played rook a2. She took on c6. I checked and she played king g1. These are precise moves and now I'm, I'm going to lose the pawn on b5. The problem is I cannot even get this pawn. Even this would uh, mean some winning chances, maybe even serious winning chances because okay, Chinese players, they are very good in tactical things, but sometimes in end games they can make uh, big mistakes. So I would be even happy about playing some posi stable position with like, one extra pawn, but even this was not possible because here white has of course check on c4 and I even lose. So after king g1 I understood the, that I lost my advantage and I just played rook f5 and here we agreed to a draw, maybe here. Okay, so let's now see what machine will say. Bishop c5, her move much better than move of Peter Shiner from two days ago, who played knight a3. And I have to take, pawn goes to e5, not great, maybe even this is playable, but she played rook a d1. And now queen b8 or knight d7 are the best moves and my memory failed me. I was thinking that queen c8 was the best move according to the machine, but obviously it is not. So this move I played mostly because I was remembering that it was the best move. And e5 is the best move for her. And now again I go wrong maybe. Okay, I'm not sure about this. Knight d7. White goes f4. It, it's, it, it looks a bit unpleasant at least. But maybe it's playable. 0, 0.25. If I go bishop f8. Bishop f8, I, I really don't like this move. I cannot even think about such moves. Because what is my knight uh, from d7 going to do? I want first to put this knight to e6 and then I can consider maybe bishop f8, but machine doesn't want probably to give pawn and maybe preparing c6, so maybe this move is interesting, but still it, it looks not very pleasant. Okay, let's check move knight h5 and see if there is some serious problem about this. Oh, so queen a4, okay, dropping it, first it showed huge advantage but now it's dropping so queen a4 so maybe knight h5 was not bad queen takes b5 c6 and queen c5 and here i should play a4 okay let's check my move so okay this position is probably playable as I said, my pawns on b7 and c6 are very strong. White, white, of course, white is better because her pieces are really so well placed. She must have some advantage, but still my pawns on b7 and c6 are very good and I cannot be in too much of a trouble. And after queen b8 that I was planning to consider, she should push e6. And then her rook probably comes to d7. Let's see if I take this. Knight e4, queen c4. Well, I must agree that the position is not very pleasant, but maybe queen b8 is not that great, really. Maybe I should play something else. Okay, I will admit that white has some advantage here. I'm not sure how much, but some advantage for sure. And now I'll go back to the move that she played, which is maybe even the best move, or in any case comparable to queen a4. And now machine says 
Okay, so in this game, according to Houdini, I made inaccuracies, several inaccuracies already. Apart from opening, that was not great, really. So after Queen C2, I, I must be much more careful in this situation because I, I had somehow very good experience two days ago and I was very happy with this opening, but actually things are far from simple. And here, machine prefers to keep the bishop. With bishop e6. And okay, even here white white has advantage. 38. And it's not so little or 40. So it's not so clear. We will say that it's not clear at all. I, I'm happy with my decision most probably. Because I saw this position is not too bad actually. My knight is coming to e6 and I'm somehow holding everything and I have a pawn more still. So it's she should also do something. And okay, I'm pretty sure this move was not so great. Knight g7 is good, already position is equal. I'm sure queen d7 is another mistake. And after c6 I already have better position. But now, unfortunately for me, she finds the best move, knight a3. Or is it the best move? Maybe not. So there are a few similar moves. Let's see. But okay, for me this move was clearly the best. And what? Now I had to play queen b8. <laughs> Very interesting. I wanted really to exchange the queens and machine just runs away from this exchange. And queen b8 is by far the best. Knight f5 I was considering, but knight f5 it was possible, or knight e6. And I thought she would either take and rook d7 or just... I, I thought she would jump on c4, this was my, my calculation. I jumped to d4 and she takes on c8, what is the problem now? Knight b6 can win exchange if I take with the wrong rook. So I must take with this rook. Then I thought she would just take the pawn on a5. Now I go rook e7 or rook c7. Computer says rook c7 looks a bit more logical because rook on e8 is attacking e5 and also I don't want to close my bishop. And here now I don't have an extra pawn anymore. So this bothered me to be honest. I wanted to have extra pawn, now I don't have extra pawn, so why would I be so much better here? I might be, I might be, but I must I I fail to understand the logic behind this. Why do I have advantage here if, if I do have advantage? I, I have a threat, I want to go rook a8 and take the pawn on a2. b4 for her not possible because of knight c2 probably but still for me it's not so clear why why my advantage is maybe she has problem to uh, to protect the pawn on a2 wow i would never think about this but let's see she goes for example knight c4 i attack the pawn and she goes rook d2. Is this not possible? And I can push b5 according to the machine. And after knight e3, for example, I can just double my rooks on a file. And I win this pawn. She might still push a4, maybe. But okay, I win pawn and keep serious chances. So this was a very interesting way to play. I wish I could find such things. And let's see even better suggestion according to the machine, queen b8. What is the logic behind this? Hmm. So I saw in the game, I saw this move. 
and I saw that I would be attacking pawn on e5, but I just said, okay, once I take on e5, white, white will exchange and take on b7. And then I said, okay, why would I play such a move? If I cannot even take this pawn on e5, white has options knight c4 to b6, d6 or something like that. But actually, probably my idea is to go knight e6 and then rook d8, trap the white queen. So knight c4, she's probably going to play, I mean, what else? And then I go knight e6, now she has to lose some time to play with her queen. And now I can go queen c7, I guess, or rook d8, machine says. I would be quite happy even with uh, queen c7. Okay, queen c7 also good. But rook d8 might be even better in any case. Now, when I think about this, this looks really good and I don't have explanation why it looks so good. Okay, somehow just when I compare the positions, this position looks great and probably my queen now will be good on c7. It will protect my pawn on c6. Then I will be able to maybe push b5 and this was really nice way to, to play. and my my pieces would be well placed really so a4 probably not a great move she played correct knight c4 i think taking on b3 is normal and now again queen b8 with similar ideas again queen b8 was nice way to place my pieces probably but I failed to see this and I play I played a bit ugly move, rook e7. Coming with this rook in front of my bishop. And now she should have taken Houdini thanks. And then jumped to b6. Rook to c7. Well, I, I must admit that it's not so easy now to untangle my pieces. My knight should go to d4, that's, that's correct, but now I agree this looks uh, okay for her. I mean, still I should have something, but she should have played like this, because what she did, she just returned and I'm now a pawn up and she has some compensation, but I don't know if she has enough. I'm sure she doesn't have enough, but queen c7. So we made quite quite a few mistakes around here. She, first she entered with queen. I didn't see nice line with knight going to d4 and giving a pawn on a5. Okay, I didn't see very nice line with queen b8, knight e6. Then she didn't see... Um, but it was better to exchange queens than jump to b6 with her knight. So quite some mistakes. Okay, she, she played good here. She played h4, which is by far the best move according to computer. And she played it uh, quickly, I think. Yes, she didn't even spend um, one minute for this move. So she found really the, the important move. And I played knight f5, which is good. And she played h5. And now I made the most terrible mistake of this game, of course, I pushed b5. Okay, I had really little time, but still it doesn't matter. I, I was aware that it was very important. Throughout the game I was aware that my pawns on b7 and c6 are very important pawns. They are blocking this fantastic bishop on g2, so I must uh, just keep this resource for the right moment and not, not push it to be five just like that. I had to be more sure and I had to calculate this. Especially, okay, here the position is much better for me. I'm pawn up and there are many ways that I can play and try to win this position. Okay, I have a little time, but still uh, 13 moves later I will get half an hour, so... It's not like I have to play until the end of the game with this time. And the move that I saw, that I was considering, was quite okay. Well, I think I was afraid of something like e6 here, maybe.
but the machine is happy to just jump to d4, not take this pawn, and then take with the queen on f7. Okay, I agree, I agree this. So I made some mistakes, maybe I, f I failed to find better places for my piece. Okay, first I will start from the opening. My opening uh, preparation was not adequate. I, it was it was uh, bad, I got, I simply, I, I forgot even what the computer was saying and I got uh, some problems not so small out of the opening. Then okay, she made some mistakes, she gave me a chance and I failed to find best places for my pieces. I failed to find two different setups that would offer me excellent chances. Instead of this, I gave her chance to exchange queens and get a position that, that would not be so bad. And okay, she, she didn't do that. And now I made the third mistake in this game after not knowing openings and making one mistake that was maybe not so simple. Uh, I, I made the, the next mistake and it was this mistake was really huge because in position where, where I'm much better I just let her have draw immediately so this was actually a terrible mistake and maybe the main reason was one of the reasons was time trouble definitely but anyway my chess understanding should be enough so that I must know that I cannot push b5 in this position and let her have all these pawns because after b5 I, I'm aware that all these pawns might fall so this was really a terrible decision and apart from this okay after this I'm pretty sure everything everything is quite clear so but I will just check a bit more b5 h takes g6 h takes g6, knight d6. Okay, here also rook d8 maybe. But it's already very difficult to calculate in time trouble such things. So, But probably even that is okay for white. Queen takes d6. Unfortunately here I cannot protect the pawn because she wants to take also c5. So if I go rook c8 she will take on c5. So I took, rook takes. Rook e5. No, it's it's not possible, of course, to fight seriously with rook a3. So this is very similar. Yes, it's, it's a just drawn position. Yes. So apart from these three mistakes that I mentioned, I probably made some more inaccuracies at least. So this was okay. Rook d1. Yes. So this was let's say wrong opening preparation. After e5, hmm, not so clear. Maybe knight h5 was even okay. And she pushed b3. I took on b5. This was probably at least comparable and probably even not worse. I would repeat these decisions. And bishop f8, I think I would play this move again as well so this part was okay so i generally three mistakes bad opening not finding best positions for my pieces when i had much better position and extra pawn and and finally the biggest and gravest mistake of of all pushing b5 and just forcing a draw practically okay i was hoping for some advantage but even this even my dreams were actually not something special, just a pawn more in some endgame. And I should have continued to fight with the board full of pieces. And of course, it it uh, uh, 
means that I, I must risk some things. So she must play some good moves and beat me. She might play some good moves and beat me, but okay, that's the risk I, I have to take. Otherwise, it's not possible to, to win games.